to the session. Uh, thanks for waiting. I have a mistake on the hour. <laughs> so Monica's here, Bouch is here, and I'm just only the moderator of this session that it's called the challenges in the volunteer committees. As you know, uh, our movement since this in their inception is built uh, about uh, voluntary committees that are usually doing a uh, task that relies on their skills, their free time, uh, volunteer time. So I want first to introduce uh, Ana Torres Adel, who is the executive director of Wikimedia Argentina. <laughs> Thank you. Next, Monica Bonilla, who is the executive director of Wikimedia Colombia. And Boch Bostria, who is the lead of this great conference. Great, great conference. They are member also of, uh, in the past, and actually part of many volunteer uh, committees. So yeah, this is a, a reflection about um, some situations that, that we are facing as a volunteers, and in addition as a, as a, as a person who are leading efforts uh, who are not exactly always in the in the route that we want, of course, but uh, this is a dialogue. If you want to share feelings, uh, concernings, concerns that you have, uh, it, the, the MIG is open, but uh, I will uh, give first a round of, of questions to our panelists, uh, he, and uh, Monica will talk in Spanish, so I can translate you if you want, or Okay. Okay. The first question, Anna, if you want to be, to start, is uh, from your personal experience. What has it been like to serve in a volunteer committee? What's your experience serving in a committee? Okay. Um, I'm wearing two hats today because I'm also a pay staff in Wikimedia Argentina, but I've been lucky enough to also be part of different committees in, in the movement. Um, I think that we are later, gonna, we are gonna talk about the challenges. <laughs> there are many, but um, on the good side of being part of committees, I think that for me, the biggest, um, uh, how to say, but um, what the, the, the biggest thing that has given to me being part of committees, volunteer committees in this movement is the connections, right? I mean, I think that when you belong to a committee, you connect with other peers beyond your country and beyond the region. And it um, allows you to understand what others are doing in different parts of the world, even though time zones sometimes are challenging. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, uh, in my particular, in my personal experience, uh, the biggest, uh, again, experience that I had was with uh, the strategy committees. Uh, I've been part of the strategy process or I was part of the strategy process for, the, for almost four years. Uh, and again, this idea of, of this, um, yeah, this idea of connecting with others, uh, knowing others from around the movement, uh, I think is the best thing I yeah, I, it came out uh, from the committees for me. I don't know, I pass it to... Sure. Always I seen uh, Butch at, at, at the night when it's my morning, so <laughs> yes. that's very challenging. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, the really the, the challenge of the time zone, because uh, not just with the Wikimania steering committee, uh, also with the uh, with the other committees that I have, I, I think I could not count the, uh, the number of has aware from movement strategy, uh, regional grants committees, uh, Wikimania steering committee, core organizing team, ECIAP uh, uh, co uh, organizing uh, ECIAP team. So uh, it's it's a hard balance because uh, if uh, if you are really engaged with people, you have to make sure that uh, you see their uh, time zone, their commitments. Uh, if they are handling another commitment uh, on their affiliate or within their volunteer roles, of course their their uh, day jobs as well, family. So it's it's a complex process. Um, but uh, for instance, for ECF alone, I think uh, on the 
fifth or sixth meeting, we're able to perfect the time zone already <laughs> because uh, we have to balance the the people from Myanmar with uh, the people from uh, New Zealand. So it's uh, it's a large time zone. But uh, if in case uh, there's a panelist like Anna, who is in uh, Argentina, so that added another complexity on the equation. And Monica, what can you share us about this? Bueno, pues sí, los comités de, de voluntarios y voluntarias son un desafío, creo que en cualquier escenario. Sin embargo, eh, me parece que es un espacio en el que realmente como movimiento le damos voz a muchas perspectivas para poder construir juntos y juntas de acuerdo a las necesidades, a los intereses, de acuerdo a los mismos objetivos que tienen los eventos. Eh, la más reciente experiencia que tenemos desde Colombia en relación a los comités eh, de voluntarios y voluntarias, pues justamente fue la, la, la experiencia de IberoConf 2023, en donde tuvimos, eh, no sé, como cuatro comités diferentes con personas. Eh, difícil en relación al tema de toma de decisiones, pero al final cuando construimos juntos y juntas, pues es mucho más cercano a lo que realmente necesitamos y no va en una sola dirección, sino que es multidireccional las construcciones que tenemos ahí. ¿Qué es eso? Um, let me see if I can translate that. Um, she's, yeah. um, she said that, um, yeah, the committees might have some challenges, but they also... Um, how to say um, they're good, like, yeah, yes. I mean, what you can get from them are like a good experience and the best experience or the last experience that they had was Iberoconf 2023, where he worked with four committees and some of the challenges are mainly um, around decision making when you have a, a committee with volunteers uh, that they bring different perspectives, decision making processes might be challenging, but um, they also um, make the the, the um, event uh, like a stronger, right? Uh, so, so I think I, I summarize it well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking at the Spanish speaking. <laughs> okay. And uh, talking about the the common force that are ensured by the composition of many persons of the movement. What do you think about the composition? We are granting equity in the composition of the bodies of the movement, actually? What can you say about it? Oh, gosh. <laughs> this is a very difficult question. Um, I think that my answer is no. I mean, I'm not sure that we are getting there yet. Um, I think that belonging to a committee depends on, on a lot of things. And, um, as the societies are built today, women are still, I don't know, having two or three works, um, not many free time. Yeah, good. Uh, yeah, makes more sense. Uh, no many free time. I mean, taking care of the kids, taking care of the house. I mean, we have seen it a lot during the pandemic. Um, yes, uh, um, I don't, I mean, the pandemic, of course, has hit us everybody but not equally i think that we have been hit more right so i think that we still have a lot of work to do regarding uh, rich inequality in, in committees um i think that at least uh, the the this uh, this question is on the agenda and maybe some years ago the, it wasn't even on the agenda so i'm happy to see that we are questioning and opening right this 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 kind of discussions um, but we have to do things about it. I remember when we, some women of the movement uh, asked for quotas that it was like unknown, right? I mean, I remember that it was a huge pushback. No, no quotas, no, because uh, yeah, it goes against um, democracy. I remember that. There's a lot of uh, experiences around the world where quotas in fact have uh, I don't know, half, um, half strengthened the democracies, right? Um, so I think that there's a lot of uh, things that need to be addressed uh, regarding this issue, and we are not yet there. So my answer is no. 
Okay, so for the steering committee of uh, Wikimania, actually I was uh, only brought into the steering committee in the middle of the pandemic um, because they they are looking for a person who is uh, best who would describe on the next host. Um, but unexpectedly, when it was uh, moved from Bangkok to Singapore, um, the question of uh, visas came into the picture. And uh, uh, the best person who could uh, explain that are those who are struggling in applying for visas. So the only best person who could explain that is either me or Ivan. But sometimes Ivan is not present. Sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so uh, that, that got as a complexity because the the rest of the uh, the composition of the uh, steering committee are technically are from the OECD countries so uh, or those uh, who are in also in the global north so uh, it's we were already exploring that possibility to uh, to uh, review the uh, the composition of the uh, uh, wikimania steering committee to have voices uh, from other communities and also subject matter experts in uh, their respected fields in decision making in uh, uh, the future of Wikimania, which happened a, a few uh, uh, minutes ago. Um, another thing that I would like to also mention is uh, why you now see there's a regional grant committees, because uh, what you see right now is, uh, uh, let's say, a grant application from uh, Argentina cannot be reviewed a person from Indonesia. They don't know the, the context or how they, 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 they operate. So that's why the, the composition of uh, the, the ones giving grants is coming from move from global to uh, a regional setup. So that's, that's how uh, we see right now, but uh, for the other committees, so probably we could, uh, we could explore and uh, collaborate with the other committees like AFCOM and other uh, committees and how we could uh, uh, do that sh shape up. Uh, for ESIAP, uh, it's quite complex. We have a tense discussion already last uh, Tuesday, but uh, applying the uh, uh, we are Asians, and uh, we have uh, in uh, uh, and also up, uh, from the Pacific. So we used logic and math on <laughs> on de determining the uh, the composition and the, of the diversity of the the council that we're trying to do. Thank you. Bueno, yo también voy a hablar del comité de programas de Latinoamérica y el Caribe, y en relación a esto creo que. Um, eh, la composición también debería integrar cuestiones como la equidad de género, eh, participación también en la toma de decisiones de los recursos. Eh, hay otro tema que también me parece muy importante y es conocer las condiciones locales. Entonces, eh, para el caso de Colombia, pues alguien que evalúe las propuestas o las solicitudes de Colombia debería tener mucha más cercanía a lo que hacemos, a nuestras identidades eh, y bueno pues creo que el comité para latinoamérica y el caribe ha ido cambiando y pues hemos visto cambios que eh, justo están un poco alineados a esto y eh, otro tema que también eh, me parece bien importante ahí en relación a, a cómo deberían mejorarse los procesos es el tema de las revisiones eh, pero para estas revisiones me parece importante que deberían estar tanto personas que conocen y que son históricos en el movimiento eh, como personas nuevas también, pues por, por lo mismo, ¿no? como para poder tener varias perspectivas eh, sin dejar de lado y sin sopesar alguno de los dos puntos. Monique is saying that uh, in, in, the, in her experience, the committees in Latin America and the Caribbean area is now uh, turning to, to join people that are not exactly from the region or that no, are not people who knows the local context of the countries that are, evaluate, uh, are being evaluated by the committees. So she's suggesting that maybe the, the actual composition of the committees need to involve more people, veteran people, and local people that can know the, 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 
reality of the countries that will be the uh, grant will have grants deployed uh, by the Wikimedia Foundation. I think. Okay, thank you for, for the, your experience. And I think um, in our movement, the composition of actual, actually the composition of the committees uh, is our movement in general is characterized by a high standards of transparency and accountability. We are committed with that. Uh, do you think that the current model or the current composition of the, or the mechanism of the committee of the committees are ensuring accountability and transparency? You mean the committees, like the regional committees, for example? Uh, okay, I'm gonna focus on that because she already brought it here. Um, no, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the Mrs. Mis no today. Um, no, I think that we are confused. I mean, I think that the, the strategy, the 3020 strategy brought us a lot of um, information about which movement we want to see in the future, right? It was a strategy, just to remember everybody who's here that might not be involved in the process, I think that was a strategy that involved a lot of communities around the movement that was done in a very collaborative way. Of course, we missed voices, and of course, uh, we could have done it better um, because all processes could be done better, right? I mean, there's nothing perfect. Um, but at the end, I think that we had some recommendations that were um, agreed by a lot of people in the movement and ratified, blah, blah, blah. And one of the principles that uh, was on those recommendations was the decentralization principle, uh, which we have heard a lot. Um, but I think that we are, conf uh, we are um, mis how confusing, I don't know how the word, but um, yeah, uh, the idea of regionalization and decentralization is not the same, right? I think that what is happening today in, with these committees in particular is of course the Wikimedia Foundation trying to apply these recommendations and uh, I don't know, making sure that, uh, yeah, that there are more people in our local context that know what, I mean, that evaluate our processes and evaluate our grants, but it's a top-down uh, process, I mean, I. I mean, in the recommendation, I think it was very clear said that everything that affects the communities should be asked to the communities. I think that maybe it could have take us longer to decide which kind of process we wanted to have in Latin America or in the rest of the world, uh, because for me, not all solutions fit everybody, uh, every, everywhere. Um, but what we have now is a process that was set up by the Wikimedia Foundation that affect us directly to us um, with people volunteering committees, which I respect a lot. I respect the, the, a lot the work that the volunteers do. Uh, but at least in Latin America, uh, at some point has been, a little, has been a little bit challenging as well. Um, how we connect with this committee, do the, the, how can we know each other in those committees hasn't been easy. Um, so for me, it was a little bit disappointed because I was a little bit disappointed because I, I think we had a very unique opportunity to really start doing things differently. Again, building from bottom up. Um, and my fear is that by regionalizing, we are thinking that we are really decentralizing. And for me, are really different things. Um, so that's my perspective. Um, the matter of uh, reporting to the community versus uh, keeping it for the community, for, uh, it's a really complex process, especially if it involves uh, legal uh, constraints. Uh, for instance, if we throw out an uh, announcement or particular information prematurely, and it will be more difficult to retract it if you found a, a, a possible legal repercussion or if there is a, uh, the information is need, still need to be verified. So it's best that it is a calculated risk. If it is already ready, uh, that inf the information uh, is no longer at risk or it is uh, already have uh, sufficient information backed by, uh, by data, 
then it, by all means, we have to report it to the community. There's nothing for us to, be, to withheld uh, such information within the committee level. Yeah, that, that's uh, what, uh, what I foresee for now. Uh, we are very open and transparent in giving reports, uh, but just give us enough time uh, when it, is, it will be released, if it is ready. Bueno, en relación a la transparencia, tenemos una herramienta en el movimiento que es Meta, que nos permite un poco conocer en detalle el tema de recursos, la toma de decisiones. Creo que no es totalmente o no está completamente transparente todo el proceso, pero que se han hecho muchos cambios y creo que deberíamos seguir insistiendo en el ejercicio de eh, poder visibilizar pues lo que estemos haciendo. Entonces, eh, de, de nuevo me regreso al caso de, de IberoConf. Eh, nosotros y nosotras desde Wikimedia Colombia justamente como un ejercicio de contarle a otras personas eh, y de ser transparentes en cómo se tomaron decisiones respecto a becas o a los recursos eh, y pues no es solo un mensaje para las comunidades que estuvimos ahí sino también para la fundación eh, porque pues es necesario y nuestro movimiento es abierto, colaborativo y transparente y bajo la transparencia es que se construyen bases. Ahora eh, creo que también deberíamos invertir mucho en el tema de documentación de procesos, eh, de retroalimentación tener espacios de retroalimentación eh, y bueno esto de la retroalimentación no se ha dado tampoco por completo porque eh, bueno tiempo recursos poner de acuerdo a las personas eh, pero también quería eh, destacar que eh, eh, estaba en el pasillo y escuché que estaban hablando de eh, haber puesto pública la lista de personas de becas que se habían recibido para Wikimania para esta Wikimania y también los argumentos para dar o no becas y creo que eso también es un ejercicio de transparencia eh, y pues que deberíamos seguir replicando este tipo de, de prácticas. Monica is saying that uh, actually Meta have a lot of details about the processes that the grants the grants are uh, given uh, that you can find many details, but it's not sufficient about the processes actually. Secondly, she said that in the, she was part of the organization or was the main organization of IberoConf, the regional conference of IberoCop initiative, and in that sense. Uh, the report that she made and, sh and her team made uh, was not for the communities involved in the process or the conference, was for the foundation, also for the movement that is public, the report uh, about how the scholarships was decided, how the re resources was chosen or the decision making process of the conference, of the general conference. And third, uh, it was that she heard in the, in the corridors uh, people talking about the publication or the publishing of the, the, the list or the full list of the persons who received the uh, scholarship to attend Wikimania this time. And also the criteria, the criteria and the reasons why that person received a scholarship and she insists that that uh, practice need to be replicated and do um, need to be repeated year by year, right? Okay, so yeah, we are in a tricky conversation when we talk about transparency because every country, every region have a different uh, historical trajectory or a different uh, understanding of transparency means, no? But talking about um, Changes. Uh, I, I heard that is not sufficient. The actual uh, compositions by of the of the volunteer committees. Uh, I don't know if I heard well, Anna, but maybe there's a sort of intervention of the Wikimedia Foundation in the mechanisms of the committees. That's a very hard word, uh, big <laughs> word. Um, um, no, what I would say is that, um, again, uh, back to my words, um, I think that we had a unique opportunity to build, com I mean, 
this is, I mean, it's happening, right? That we have the Movement Charter Committee working and probably we will know better what's the Global Council and how it works and, and um, yes. And it, this Movement Charter Committee is a, is a community committee, is volunt our volunteers, right? Um, I think that what I feel is that when distributing the funds in the regions, I think that we missed an opportunity. That's my feeling today. Like, I think that um, we had the chance to build something more bottom up and finally has been more top down. And I was a little bit disappointed by that. Not because of the people who is on the committee, not because of the of the um, response or the how they evaluate it, uh, not the processes. Of course, every region is different. I'm talking on behalf of the, my experience in the Latin American region, um, but because I feel that we missed this opportunity to, okay, sit down together and say, okay, how we want the movement to distribute the funds from now on how, I mean, through what mechanisms, through what processes. I understand that we need it. Once we had that recommendation, we need to implement those recommendations, but we, it took us four years to build the strategy. I think that we could have waited, I don't know, one more year or half a year uh, to discuss this. That was very important and is directly affecting the communities at the local level. I think that, again, bringing this, the recommendations and the values in the recommendation, this idea of subsidiarity, that is also a very strange word for a lot of languages, but it means um, taking into account the communities that are directly affected by, um, yeah, by um, a decision. I think that uh, we missed the opportunity to build something involving more actively the communities. I know that uh, the grants uh, department have done a, a good, I mean, a great job. They uh, they work a lot on, on. I mean, they they created. I remember like a design sessions where I was there. So, so the intention was there, but I think that we missed um, a little bit. More. Yeah again, the opportunity to build something more bottom-up and more, um, yeah, I don't know how to say that would address better the needs of the communities. That's my feeling. Um, because what we have now is, again, it's great, but for those who have been around the movement for a long time, it reminds me a lot of the FDC. I mean, it's kind, I mean, it's kind of, right? It, we replicated the same committee, but of course, uh, much better because now I can speak Spanish, I can write it in Spanish, I, they evaluate me in Spanish, so that's amazing. That's something I, I couldn't do like 10 years ago. It was impossible. It was an idea that it was not even on the table, right? So I think that we have um, advanced a lot, but um, yes, I, I don't think we are yet there to at least in, those, in that particular committee, I'm not talking to the rest of the committees in the movement, but for the regional committees, I think that we could have done it better. That's my perspective. Uh, probably in the uh, uh, Wikimania steering committee is somewhat loose compared to that. I have experience with the regional grant committees. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'm, it's hard to toggle uh, my mind from one 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 committee to another. Um, yeah, the regional grants committees is somewhat complex. Uh, but uh, what we do in ECF, uh, we are trying to engage also with the other regional grant committees, our best practices so that everything is synced together because we have regional grant committees. There's local context on everyone. But we, we need to make sure that the, we have a unified process. Like, for instance, uh, we need a proper feedback mechanism so that it, we ensure that the the grantee will be able to get a very good uh, grant rather than we just uh, do a binary uh, selection like approve or disapprove. In terms of the, uh, while we are in the uh, Wikimania steering committee, uh, we they are actually allowed ECF to, to decide on the fate of Singapore because uh, basically uh, if... Uh, for transparency reasons, uh, this is the first time that I will tell uh, publicly that uh, the steering committee, when Bangkok uh, backed out, uh, we actually have uh, directly consulted with the steering committee what will be the next step, and they allowed us some freedom on 
what will be the determination. And uh, we use this the uh, the ESIAP uh, virtual meeting and surveyed our uh, all our uh, countries, and they all agreed uh, to uh, uh, host Wikimania if in case it was decided in another country, uh, except Hong Kong, uh, and uh, because they they were in a turmoil at that time. So. Uh, uh, but uh, what we did is uh, we did like somewhat an Olympic bid already that we have two two or three rounds of selection. We base it on hard data, um, like uh, how many percent this particular group at, is at risk if it is in this country, how many percent at risk is this country will do if it is in a visa process. Uh, so after that, uh, it, it ends up with the final number. Okay, we got this this uh, country to select a uh, Wikimania, and then it was forwarded to the steering committee. We we just uh, give uh, 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 sorry, I'm toggling from ESIAP to steering committee, but uh, from on the ESIAP perspective, we want uh, some formality from the steering committee if they they accede to our decision and they have agreed to uh, overwhelmingly to, uh, to to agree to get Singapore. So in, in future conferences, so we, we try to apply that, but uh, of course it depends on the local context. So we cannot force uh, a certain region like uh, Latin America to, to do the same uh, process as ours. So it really depends on the local community or the local uh, grouping if uh, what will be the best suit on, 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 on their side. Bueno, ya hablaron de retroalimentación y también de um, el tema de recursos, pero bueno, transparencia y rendición de cuentas no, no son lo único, sino que también deberíamos tener, eh, bueno, y en el caso de los comités, de si están funcionando o no, si hemos tenido muchos avances, el idioma, la documentación. Cuando eh, recuerdo que hicimos desde Wikimedia Colombia la primera solicitud de grants, no sabíamos quiénes estaban evaluando ni cuáles eran los parámetros y ahora ya conocemos al grupo de personas. Eh, no estoy segura que tengamos claridad de todos los parámetros que se tienen en cuenta para la evaluación de las solicitudes y creo que eso pues, es necesario. Pero también tenemos que hablar pues, de gobernanza, ¿no? de cómo se toman las decisiones, eh, de cuál es la lógica, eh, si son los intereses de las comunidades o si estamos alineadas las comunidades o no con los intereses de la fundación y el tema de cómo se distribuyen los recursos. Eh, y creo que pues, hay una situación de de desconfianza en la toma de decisiones y entonces estaría muy bien tener espacios para poder hablar también con la fundación eh, y, y construir y preguntar y recibir retroalimentación, pero también reunirnos con los comités de, que evalúan las propuestas que hacemos. Eh, para el caso, por ejemplo, de Wikimedia Colombia también hemos hecho construcciones de programas para solicitar grants eh, en donde hemos integrado las voces eh, de las personas voluntarias en el país eh, y esto es muy significativo y también hoy hablábamos mucho del tema de los indicadores y creo que eso también es muy importante, eh, que construir una comunidad es mucho más difícil que crear artículos en Wikipedia. Y eso también pues debería integrarse y no es muy claro aún, pero creo que deberíamos tener espacios para poder, eh, al menos para que el comité funcione mucho mejor. Monica said that uh, she recognizes the, the, uh, all the things that has changed the last years about language, about the decision making process, that it's more open maybe, but it's not sufficient because we need to, to have more clarity about how the decision is taken inside the committees and, and the composition of the committees and about, and be more clear about the decision making process in not is not the same that trans transparency and accountability is not the same, but we need also uh, more, um, what, what did you say? Transparency. 
uh, talk about governance, no? The, uh, this, have a discussion about governance inside the, the volunteer committees. So uh, we're approaching now to the lunch. We have, I think, space for two questions of, of in interventions because we have seven minutes. So if you want to, the microphone is over there. Pues, a propósito de gobernanza, eh, mi pregunta es para todo y toda, todas y todos, pero especialmente para Mónica. Eh, ¿Qué podemos hacer para um, hacer posible de hablar su propio idioma, especialmente cuando no se habla inglés, en un comité de voluntarios de gobernanza mundial? ¿Cuáles son las buenas prácticas? En inglés ahora. Mi pregunta es para todos, pero especialmente para Mónica. What we can do to ensure that you can speak your own language, especially if you don't speak specifically English, uh, to participate in the committees for global governance of the movement? What could be the good practices? Thank you. I can go first. Um, okay, I think that is a very difficult question, and we don't have an answer. But I would say that you need a political commitment for it. I mean, it's a commitment as well, and we need political commitment and resources. When you have a political commitment, it's like when you create a policy in a government, right? You need to resource that policy to make it happen. I think that is what we need in the in the movement. I think, that, again, um, I, I'm old enough in this movement to, to have grown through, um, I don't know, conference where English was the only language, I mean, you could only speak in English, and now we are advancing. Again, reporting in your own language for me was a change, um, a huge change for Wikimedia Argentina and also for me because nobody knew, but I did three, three, three kinds of reports in Spanish, then I had to translate it in English and then translate it to code because it was a meta, right? So for me, it was like one month reporting <laughs> just to submit it. Um, but I think it's... Uh, we need a political commitment. We need a, 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 yeah, I don't know who to ask in the foundation because of the board of trustees, not even the, the executives in the foundation should be from the board of trustees to say, okay, from now on boarding, on, on going, we will, I don't know, at least the eight main languages or, or everybody could speak in their own languages. And for that, needs, you need resources. It's, that's my feeling. I mean, uh, if I look at how the General Assembly of the United Nations happens, it's a you have like 100 translators behind the, the right, the Congress, uh, women and men, translating what is said. Everybody is more intelligent in their own language. I'm more intelligent in Spanish. I can promise to all you. I mean, <laughs> by far, I'm more smart in Spanish. Uh, so I think it's uh, again. Ask, I mean, we as volunteers and, com and community keep asking. I think, again, we have advanced a lot, but ask for this political commitment and resource that political commitment. No. Uh, sorry, I'm always looking at the time. I also have to apply my hat as lead organizer. <laughs> I also already see uh, Rosie there. So a quick answer. Uh, we send a bill of materials or requirements to the foundation. We need this, we need that. We need a translator. Uh, we, we need not just a translator to live translate. We also need a translator to translate documents. Uh, we don't want it to a, a burden to a purely volunteer. And then that's it. And then uh, 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 Anna already said it well. Uh, I think for... Sí, yo iba a decir que hablar en español es una, en mi caso es una decisión política también eh, y pues creo que también necesitamos entender que nos va a tomar mucho más tiempo, recursos y esfuerzos porque también el tema de la comunicación es un tema de inclusión y pues porque seguimos teniendo espacios de discusión en inglés, pero pues también estamos aquí presentes eh, hablando español y diciendo como, oigan, somos un movimiento multilingüe eh, y necesitamos reflexionar también un poco más sobre esto. 
Monica said that the willing of talking Spanish is a political decision by her, and the language using your own language is also a political decision. And we have actually more needs about inclusion because talking your own language is a sort of inclusion that it's very important to consider, and we need to work in, in that. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your opinions. Thanks, everyone, for being here. The conversation continues in the launch, of course. Especially thanks to Botch that is in the middle of a storm. <laughs> He's talking here with us. Thank you so much, Anna, Monica, Botch. Thank you.